Hey fuckers, it's Friday. Can't spell shattered without shat or turd. Like a gut punch to the apple. Some of the funniest shit on the web. I call it a rock friend. I like the cut of your jib, gentlemen. These five are the only protection we have. The best part of the show is the genuine Hasbro love. And, I, folks, and of course, Pat's weekly part. Breaking news. It's very outside of the box. Hey, oh, I love Brian. Bob, straight and tackle. Now carrying Hasbro. Hasbro. They truly are your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. Thoughts, prayers, Likes and shares. Shout out to the A to B. Shattered Cups Uncuts. Is that you? You. Shattered Cups Uncuts. When are you going to bring Larry back? My favorite Star Wars podcast. Shattered Cast on the like complete fuckers. Podcast is intended for mature audiences only, and its sole purpose is to entertain. If it doesn't fit with your sensitive sensibilities, please feel free to turn it off now and. Shut the fuck up, Chip. Meow, 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 meow. Episode 300. Meow, meow. And also Robert D's birthday. Yay. 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 I thought you forgot. Yay. That. Yay. No, happy birthday, Robert. I was waiting for tonight. I got you no know, phone you know what amazes me about Robert D's birthday? Robert D says, I'm surprised you guys remembered. When Robert D texted us yesterday and said, it. I forgot tomorrow is my birthday. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. I remembered. Happy birthday, wrong. Robert. Thanks, Ballora. <laughs> I was wish... it on Monday? Was it Monday or Tuesday? Like, man, you know, my birthday's Wednesday. You know what I would love? If I got a present from Ballora and it was like a box and you opened a box, box one? And, and it was the mother like wrapped in a bow. <laughs> like just like uh, oozing and pulsing. I wish you would give me the mother, man. Does the mother pulse? Is it like... No, no, it's just it's just like a... It... It looks like a science experiment, like like you like you bring in the horror movie and like they have it in the lab. And just... <laughs> Hold on, have you seen Flash Gordon? No. The original. What? Wait, wait, wait. Have you seen? You never saw Flash Gordon? Uh uh-huh. Oh my god. You're kidding me. No. Have has Matthew? You've seen Flash Gordon? No. Bobby, how old are you? Thirty-eight. Exactly. Uh, he's a ram. No, he was a Bobby and I. Play. Bobby and I are. Late thirties, we we don't we don't do this. Yeah, I think we missed that. Yeah, I think this is it as a, a couple oh, years. It's still been a, it's been available us. though. It is still good. Yeah. Go flash, go, go flash. Anyway, there's a scene where he's sticking his hand in the stump, and there's this oozy yellow <laughs> poisonous creature in the middle of the stump, and it's like a, a rite of passage. And if it stings you, you die. They, they chop your arm off, and it's like this oozing, pulsating like. <laughs> And I, I picture that's what the mother is. I feel like no, that sounds like Robert's sex, lo- sex life too. It's like it, it, it's very reminiscent of like a dead jellyfish. That's horrifying. Yeah. Why? Well, 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 like, well need to watch Flash Gordon. I want to just I want to cut a piece off of that and sprinkle some flaxseed on it and have some Earl Grey. Mm. No. Uh-huh. All right. I mean, no. it is it is it is horrifying. Like it. It is a horrifying thing, in my opinion. Where does she keep it? Like in a shoebox under the bed or something? No, it's like it's actually it's in our butler's pantry. Like you walked past it probably a thousand times the other day when you were here. Is that that thing that slapped me while I was fighting you? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, mother, I need an assist, and it was like one of those fighting games. <laughs> it, it, it tripped you. It like it, it's it got on Tag all you, fours. Man. It got it got on all fours behind Robert, and I pushed his shoulder, and it like tripped over the mother. <laughs> you tag it in. Oh God! Oh God! So yes, we're all here. It is episode three hundred. We're not all here. I mean, yeah, we're not all here. Sorry, Greg is not here, but we've got Bobby Skullface. What's up? We have Justin Ttorx six. Hey, what's up? And we have Matthew Deluxe T-shirt Baldwin. Eh, what's up? And little old Robert Detolf. And Greg will be on. We're probably going to tag team. I kind of messed up. When we were planning episode 300, we wanted to make sure we could all be together. And I was like, guys, we got to make this work. Can we all get on at the same day? And I'm the one who made a big deal out of it. And then we all agreed on Wednesday. It was a dumbass. Forget his birthday. And then then yesterday night, I was like, oh, guys, uh, tomorrow's my birthday. (laughs) So, but I might be able to go a little late. Uh, No surprise to anyone. You know, Lisa's cooking me a nice dinner, which means the fire has not lit yet. And the fire someone, has not lit yet. Serpenter. She's someone, not even home. Can someone add Greg for whatever reason? It's not letting me do it. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Oh, there we go. Maybe that'll do it. There it is. Let's do it. All right. And we have Greg for mercy. 
Say hello, Greg. Hey, <laughs> stranger. What? Hi, Say Greg. Hello. Say hello. Hello. We're recording. Perfect, perfect timing. Honestly, you were the next man in the slot, so to speak. Mm. <laughs> slot. What mm. are you talking about? We already started the show. Oh, Greg. we're recording. We're saying hi. We're recording. Hello. Oh, hi. How are you? How's your day? Awesome. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so, yes, it's episode 300. You know, I mean, it is just a number. It's just it's a number. A, it's a milestone. It is. We've but I feel, like, I feel like once you get past the 200, then it's just like, eh. Like, you know, like it's, it doesn't mean as much. It's like age. You know, like when you turn like nine, it's a big deal. But when you turn like 33, it's like, eh. Nah, you know what it fuck. is? This is like turning 30. In dog years. Or no, something. no, no, it's like turning thirty one, I feel like. <laughs> I mean, you know what it is? If if Iron Man was a little person, his daughter would say, I love you three hundred. No. <laughs> um, I think like five hundred's a big deal. Yeah, five hundred would be a big deal. Three hundred is like I said, meh. Matt, like, neither we're just surprised we made this far. You Matt, know, neither you nor I will be alive by episode 500. You know, considering that, is, that, that, that is, Matt threatens to break up with our show every week, uh, every I'm surprised we made it 300. So. <laughs> Matt's like, I'm done. Every I'm done. Week. I'm walking away. Right. He doesn't threat. Sometimes we'll even be like, "What day are we doing?" He's like, "Fuck it, you guys don't want me. I'm out. I'm out." I'm like, "What the hell?" This is like one. Matt, Matt doesn't okay. threaten. He just quits. <laughs> he does. Like, hey, Robert. <laughs> As our um, as our kind of legends expert, what is Mechanic Studio? I don't know. They have a Rodimus Prime up for pre-order on uh, uh, BBTS that I'm looking at. Let's take a look. See, Let's, I just I've never. I don't feel like. I mean, we probably covered it. I just don't recall. But Hot Rod or Rodimus? Rodimus. Interest. Well, the fact that it has Mac like in Mac the name. Yeah, I think right. it's like Right. 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 Right, that's what I'm saying. Or Papa Toys or whatever. Which makes you, you know, a little concerned about uh, who made the, the, the twin throttle, or the twins, uh, the, you know, uh, mm. spinny, spinny tits. Dude, it's funny. He hit me up recently, and we, had, we, were, we were having a little bit of a conversation, and he's like, uh, he's like, just don't tell your friend from uh, from Brooklyn you've been speaking to me. <laughs> that's a, that's a good-looking Rodimus. That's pretty impressive. Who yeah. said that? Oh, the, the nefarious man? Yeah. Okay, we have Mechanic Studio, you mean? Yeah. Why were you talking to that guy? I mean, if he, I, I talked to everybody, man. Yeah, I don't know about you. I don't <laughs> know about you. It, you know, but you know, honestly, anything with mech in the name, I don't trust right. you. I don't trust right. you. I would be tempted to get this, but I don't trust who designed it, and I don't trust the name. So it may, maybe you're not associated with mech fans' toys. Maybe I'm making a big mistake by not getting this figure. But I feel like you're just, you know, pulling the little loopy doop on me, whatever it's called. Oh, What's man, the, not the loopy doop. The loopy doop. Let's see what kind of joke. <laughs> the loopy doop. I mean, you know, he's got, what is that? Do it as disc hinges for knees? What does he got on the knees? It's weird. Interesting. I mean, I, I kind of, at this point, when I'm looking at a Legends, I'm looking at a few things besides just the overall look of it. I look at the joints, mm. you know? Like, that's why I generally don't like New Age. I mean, no knock on you guys, because I respect what you like about it, because it's still quality, but I don't like the joints. I don't like ball joints. I feel like it's a cheapo way out. It's not like upper echelon engineering, but that's just my opinion. It is not a fact, and my opinion could be wrong. You know, the, uh, the uh, Iron Hide has no ball joints uh, visible. That's he may have actually has ball joint in the hip. I guess he has it in the shoulder, too. I'm wrong. Never mind. I was just there saying he doesn't. Go. He's not all ball joints. Uh, like just his the, arms uh, and legs, box. just the <laughs> hips and the shoulders, which I and think are neck. reasonable. So. His arms well, legs probably uh, oftentimes though they do do the knees and the elbows as well. I, I I understand where he's coming from with that perspective. Sure. The Dawsons um, do it. The Dawsons I mean, have a yeah. That, that, that's that's what joints. I'm saying. Is the uh, I feel like Ironhide is less ball jointed than the uh, God damn. What the hell's falling over on my desk? Everything. Jeff don't Fire. try to pick Jeff up Fire the uh, new age stuff while you're talking. I don't trust yeah. it. you put mech in your name, and I think you're just another little pimple on the back of mech fans' toys. Right. So there you go for uh, that. I mean, look, maybe I, I'm uh, what's the word? Maybe I'm a cynic at this point. I think I am, but you know, this is an example of of trademark and you know the the value of your property and your name. So <laughs> associating a name with a product, and if mech 
is in your name, I'm associating you with a knockoff company. Bobby, I think no, we're going to have to reassess your uh, Mac Skull face you were looking to rebrand. <laughs> <Ooh. Yeah. laughs> but, I mean, it, it looks good, but there's something about it that, I don't know, maybe I'm being picky and stupid, but I just have that feeling like, okay, this is the only Legends Rodimus there is. And, and there's another cool. one, isn't there? But that no, one is a hot flat rod. trash. No, I, I thought it was supposed to be uh, Rodimus is what they said it was. Maybe I'm wrong. My, my gut is telling me that this looks great because it's the first and only one out. But in six months to a year, there's going to be a, a it's, it's going to be something that comes out that puts this to shame. You know, Maybe. it's just it's just not perfect. I think I'm in on it, though. <clears throat> it look at his good. arms. His arms don't come out. Look how high his arms go. That's about his arm. Look at look. OK, look at picture one and picture two. That's about as high as his arms come out. Uh, studios. Let me look at the pictures. Yep. Again. They don't come out at all. Look at his arms. You got his arms don't come up. It's like Matt in a winter coat. Hmm. I can't put my arms down. Yeah, it's okay. I'm fine with it. I understand the uh I mean it, it it's not ideal, but I'm still fine with it. I still think it looks good enough. So if someone else comes out with one better, that's fine. Like they're cheap enough for legends that I don't mind. Baller. I'm moving off the other one. Yes, but Baller. that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, you know, should I be picking up all these things? Because now I'm like blind to lots of the stuff. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know. Have... Wow, pug... that pug's a baller. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he definitely so, yeah. is. You've seen it on the on the camera. So. He does have some big old balls. So before we uh, get started uh, with any much more shenanigans, let's bring up again the fact that we have an ROC Toys for Tots drive. There's a link in the description. Please donate your uh, unopened or switch out toys. Switch or, out. Uh, you know, it's it goes to a really good cause. I can't think of anything any better other than maybe feeding the hungry or clothing the cold mm. or buying pizza for Bobby. Um, mm. yeah, and, there's you know, cause. if you don't have unopened toys to donate, you, you can uh, click... Click, clink, clink the GoFundMe link. And just donate money. And, uh, you know, Bobby gets that too. Lots of money. He's, he's like a Kraken. Or, uh, what's the word? What's the, uh, the other, what's the other name for the Kraken? What do you call that? I don't, I don't, know, what you're I don't know what you're talking about, man. Uh, I can't. The, 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 like, the tentacle demon. Greg, what's it called? Cthulhu? Oh, the Chich. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah, Cthulhu. That that wow. is not the Kraken at all. Yeah, at all. It's like a Cthulhu face. It's like a Kraken face. <laughs> it's like Bobby face. Cthulhu face. Cthulhu. Damn, I gotta be all that, man. Jesus. Kraken. So, yeah, yeah, cra cracking okay. ass. This show, we're kind of just gonna wing it and have some fun. The, the notes yeah. are done. Uh, might as well go for the go through the notes first. Third party news. Fuck. Hasbro news. This. Statuish news. Shit. Uh, well, I was going to ask you guys a question. Where are you guys at right now in terms of uh -huh. Transformers collecting? Like, how do you feel about it? Where is your passion level? Like, wh where's wh where where's your interest? Where are you guys at? Let's just check in with one another for a bit. All right. Robert, first. Anybody? Um, I, uh, I'm really enjoying fans' toys. I'm raising my hand. Nope, put your hand down. Oh. Uh, we... I'm really enjoying fans' toys. I am enjoying Flames' toys. I had a very negative experience with them recently. Um, you know, they, they uh, uh, if you saw Bobby's review of um, Star Saber, the, uh, the exclusive, which I don't think it was more expensive, but if you buy pre order early from D4 Toys, and that's the same as like D4 Toys is the Sentinel as Planix, Planic. Oh my God! Planet Steel Express is the MMC, you know, and um, so it's kind of like that's them, that's their store. So they have exclusives to incentivize you to buy their shit. Um, so you know, it comes in an LED. Head. I'm never gonna use the head, but the fact is, what if I want to resell it? Just knowing that that part is in there and it's broken, the, the head came misassembled where it was backwards, and then you saw it in Bobby's video. He said it was backwards; it couldn't turn around because of the head sculpt, and then he. It's a ball joint. He popped it off the ball joint. There are wires in there. The wires didn't break. He turned it around, popped it back on. LED doesn't work anymore. I contacted Flame Toys, and just my email said, hey, this head was misassembled. What can we do here? The LED doesn't work anymore. They were like, we want proof of purchase. We want a photograph of your packaging and the mailer. 
we want to photograph the de defective part. Be advised, we're not going to reimburse you for any, uh, you know, uh, you know, any anything, you know, that you've tampered with and all this shit. And then I was like, you know, Bobby shot me the screenshots and photos of the head and the box and the shipper and everything. I sent it to them. Five days go by, no response. And yesterday I had to be like, and I twice already been like, hello, can you please respond? Nothing. Hello, can you respond? Nothing. And, and t yesterday night, I was like, it's been five days since I emailed you. First of all, you know, considering that you're a licensee of Hasbro's, I'm not sure Hasbro would be too happy with your customer service or your QC issues or how you deal with your, you know, you deal with your QC issues with the customer service. Let me cut you off right there, Robert. <clears throat> Hasbro's own customer service is like, yeah, send it back and we'll give you something of equal value. I, got, I, I want something but, of equal value. We'll I want else. what but I want what I paid for, and they're like, here's a My Little value. Pony three pack. But guess what? Sentinel doesn't know that. All they know is they have a license, and they need to keep Someone Hasbro knows. happy. Someone knows. They don't know. So, because it worked, and I was like, you know, I expect a response in 24 hours, or I'm going to tell everyone that I know about this experience. And Dude, you're like the Takashi 6 9 a Transformer collector. Oh, yeah, man. I, I drew a 6 9 on my face. <laughs> you know, and then uh, they, they like responded within six hours. Oh, we're so sorry. The attachment sizes were too large. Did you tell them who you was? We couldn't. No, no, no. I said, oh, who am I? I'm Bob. I'm, my name's Robert. You know, that is the nickname of Bobby. <laughs> mm -hmm. They would have definitely responded quickly. So, but so they're like, so I had to resend everything. You know, they said they couldn't open the attachments. I'm like, really? So maybe you could have responded to me saying, I can't open the attachments. <clears throat> right. Like I said, like, I spent a lot of money on this. Right. And for your customer service to be that trash is bullshit. So I was really queued up if they didn't respond to go to TFCon with the head and stand next to their table and nice. every single person that walked up <laughs> they look what they sent me and these Trash. fuckers wouldn't respond to my emails and i spent 400 and change on this figure for this head and they wouldn't even respond like i would stand there all day and i'd have a bottle of jameson in my pocket i'll, I'll make it worth my while i swear to god i would because okay, that pisses me off that's a lot of money you know you don't treat me like a douchebag you know that's what they were doing so we'll see what they do now but they better respond again um, but anyway, so it's Fans Toys, Flames Toys, Iron Factory, and Magic Square. Really, and and Takara, you know, if it's if it's good. <laughs> well, I mean, what Takara have you have you skipped on? Uh, um, Ratchet. Uh, you skipped on Ratchet? Yeah. And yeah, you I... skipped on Inferno. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. you got Grapple. No, no, I got but that. You got Ironhide. I got the iron hide, and that's when I decided I'm done with the new aesthetic with them, with that. Uh, oh, okay. But then, but then, you know, but then Sunstreaker's not in line with that, you know? He's, not as much. He's like the third generation of messy clean. That's what I would yeah, call yeah, 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 messy yeah. clean. You know what I mean? It's like your room's clean, but you didn't make your bed. Well, you know what else we forgot to do, Robert, was what did we get this week? What did you get this week, <laughs> Bobby? You're having an opportunity to look at. Oh, I, uh, let's see. Or last spot. week since that got uh, <clears throat> skipped from the show. My apologies. Um, I got the opportunity to look at the New Age Medic Ratchet. I had the opportunity to look at the Bondi Valkyrie. I got the Black Series Target Mystery Box, Commander Fox, the Mandalorian, mm -hmm. the Emperor, the Second Sister Inquisitor, Cal Kestis, or Cestus, the Jump Trooper, Calcistus, Recestus, your bedrooms are messed. <laughs> the Sith Trooper, Ray, Kylo Ren, and the Offworld Jawa, as well as the Vintage Collection, Knight of Ren, Zori Bliss, Jump Sh Jump Trooper, and Ray. And then I got uh, Storm Collectible Cyrax, Storm Collectible Smoke, and I had the opportunity to look at the three zero one sixth uh, major figure from Ghost in the Shell, which is stupid. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, did you get the gold figures? What'd you say? Did you get the gold ones? From no, no, I passed on the gold ones. I don't do the gold Transformers either, you know what I mean? That's all you got, Bobby? That's it. No pops? Nothing like that? <laughs> no pops. No G.I. Joes? No G.I. Joes. Wow. So, yeah, that mystery box, was, it sounded like you were happier to get the hat than you were. I was, get. dude. I honestly was. Because winter is coming. And uh, I, get, I always feel like I need one more Scully around the house. Mm. Oh, watch your tongue or you're going to get jinxed with another baby. <laughs> so to speak. 
So that's that's a nice haul. That's a very nice haul. It's two weeks too, though. To be fair, I wasn't on last week. It's better than eight weeks. Hey, Justin. Yes, sir. <laughs> what did you get or have an opportunity to look at? Uh, so I don't remember what all I said last week. <clears throat> I think I said I got the new age Tata Tata, whatever the hell he is, the, the little taxi cab. Uh, yep, yep. Version yep. of Ironhide. Um, I like it. It's awesome. I think it's cool. Uh, because Robert sold me that, uh, SOC Voltron, I was like, I need to replace these classic, uh, MMPR stuff I've got with the, uh, Soul of Chagokin, uh, Megazord, Dragonzord, and Titanus. Um, so last week, listeners, you didn't get to hear that, uh, I had ordered from a seller who was sending the Megazord and the Dragonzord, but they only sent the Megazord. Uh, you said that last week. <clears throat> I know, but that got cut from the show. Obviously, you didn't listen to the show, Robert. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I didn't listen to the part you didn't record, of course. Yeah, but the point is that, that you know, is true. I, I, the, the listeners <laughs> I don't know what I said last week, right? That's why I'm saying what I got last week. And I wasn't Dick. listening when you were speaking in the first place. I know. You never listen. <clears throat> anyway, with that in mind, uh, the seller was an upstanding person and did send the Dragon Sword, so I got that this week. So uh, I have Yay. all the SOC uh, original MMPR stuff. Which is fine. It's nice. It's just not as nice as Voltron. So, uh, but I like it. I'm glad I got it. I guess. So. Very good. Yeah, that's all. Hmm. Gregor's. Robert, what did you get this week? Well, I'd rather talk about what I got last week first. What did you get last week? Uh, the masterpiece MPM Barricade. Ooh, we didn't you say that? Oh, because we didn't. Because it was cut. In the show. I'm going to keep forgetting it was cut oh from the God, show. How many times did you say, say that? It got cut from the show. Robert, how much have you had to drink so far? Nothing. And I'm going to start if you don't shut up and start talking. Do you know why there's no show notes this week? Because this Bobby, is don't blame me. This is an intervention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're all we're all worried about you and the direction your life's going right now. Yeah, you drink a lot of bourbon, man. I don't drink bourbon. Yeah, whatever. Um, I got the DX9 Gabriel uh, for Big Bad Toy Store, and I loves it. And that's it. That's all I got so far. Oh, well, that's a big one. <laughs> that's what you're doing. Gonna drop a deuce, make it a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, <laughs> Matthew Deluxe uh, meme face. Yes, sir. What did you get? Um, you to look at, and I heard you fart. I don't ever have opportunities to look at anything. Um, yeah, you do. I got last week. I got um, the Studio Series Hive Tower and Drift. I got the Cyberverse Gnaw. I got in the New Age Clear Ironhide Ratchet and the Insecticons. Um, I also got the NECA Michael Myers from uh, Halloween Two. Um, I got Siege Omega Supreme. And when I did my uh, review for Omega Supreme, I uh, broke, uh, evidently I broke my uh, Omega Supreme from Fan Stories. The leg uh, either fell off or snapped off or something. I don't know, but it, it was it was everything. So I've got a new part coming in. Hopefully I can uh, fix that guy. And I also got... Let me, let me cut you off right there really quick. I'm going to let you yes. finish, as Bobby would say. Now, from when you contacted Fan Stories, how long did it take for them to respond? Uh, a couple hours. See? Mm-hmm. That ain't five days. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was the same. <coughs> and then I, I paid like eight bucks for the part, and he said it'll be about four to six weeks, and you'll get it. So hopefully I can fix it uh, when I get it. And um, I also got last week was uh, the 3A Blitzwing uh, from uh, the Bumblebee movie, and I every, loved every, it. It's a book. Everybody knows. Yeah, no. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. I, I nice. love the pictures. I love the pictures that uh, I took and everything. It came out really nice, and it's a, it's a beautiful piece. I just like Bumblebee. It goes together. Uh, um, even the people in our Antarctica know. That's fine. Um, they I'm need gonna, to I'm going to go look at it right now. They need to. Um, then today, uh, this week, I picked up the Siege Battlemaster uh, Caliburst, and I got in the, the Siege Barricade. And today I got in finally. Well, not finally, but I had I was a little worried about it because um, the tracking wasn't falling. I got my new age uh, Megatron in, a game phenomenon or something, a phenomenon. And I got the uh, Generation Selects Power Dasher Chromar and Hotshot in today. I did not expect those either uh, from Pulse. And that is it. That's all I got. Hotshot. 
Yes, Hot Shot. He was in uh, Armada, Cybertron, and Energon. You got an Energon figure? <laughs> he got, I remember you got it. Garbatron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's his, that's his opinion. It can you, be wrong. You paid for an Energon figure? It's a it's a recolor and a retool of a uh, Siege Hound. You paid so, for a retooled Energon figure? I did. Oh, oh man. I love Transformers, Robert. Mm. You mm-hmm. don't know by now, then. Sorry. Hey, Robert. Mm-hmm. Yes, Matthew. <sighs> what did you get, man? Oh, thanks for asking. Well, first and mm-hmm. foremost, I got a, a Matthew Deluxe Baldwin T-shirt. I'm the Gonic Spinout, and it's a very nice T-shirt. Awesome. I'm glad you like it, man. I accidentally got two, so if I get spaghetti sauce on one, I'll have clean one to wear out on the night. Like, really? I, don't know. I was like, why are there two in here? Because I remember like you, you click buy now, but then you accidentally back, and then you're not sure if the sale went through, so then you're like, oh, let me click it, and now I bought two. <laughs> That's what happens to me. Sorry. Um, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. I bought some I bought some Bobby swag, too, waiting for that to come. You know, your shelf is trash. should be on a hoodie, too, baby. Yeah. I think so. I can That's make a, that happen. Maybe on the back, like something different. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, don't listen to me. I'm no expert, you know. Ask Matt for the marketing advice. It's funny, man. That one, that one, like that one did quite well, and I just kind of threw it together as like a, like, like just to laugh at the end. Yeah, but uh, I want to walk around TFCon with a shirt that says "Your shelf is trash" with your face. <laughs> <laughs> I want, gonna... I want the same thing, and I want your table number and location. <laughs> just to make it real interesting no one's gonna come with that energy nope no, no, nobody's gonna keep that energy uh, what else did I get I got God, I wish somebody would that'd be funny <laughs> I just, I just, y'all keep saying nobody's gonna do it but you know what somebody's gonna get stupid somebody's except gonna my, get my, stupid except the, you, know, you know what I, I think I have encountered people firsthand that have that have come up thinking they had that energy but then they meet me and they don't i'm not who they think i am in their head do you know what i mean yeah like in their in in their head he's like he's a fucking dick he's not gonna speak to me he's gonna be an asshole he's and then i'm like what's up man like you know and talk and then they're like oh they buy 15 prints and shit well then they're like man i I may have this guy fucked up you know like he can't be a nasty guy he sold me his toy he sold me that gorilla for two (laughs) dollars yeah he sold me robert's gorilla Oh my god! He gave me the Superion for fifty bucks. What a nice guy! <laughs> yeah, man. But I can see that. I can see that too. Somebody get all you know, huffy puffy and everything. They come up and they're like, oh, what? what yeah, cause that, I've had a little bit of that. I've had a little bit of that where people have come up and been like, you know, you could tell they got a chip on their shoulder, but by the time they leave, they're like, man, that guy's alright. Because mm. like my thing is, uh, it's not about the people, man. It's about the product. Hmm. Really? So you yeah. flip you flip the script there when you're behind the table. No, what I'm saying is in regard to what I trash. I'm not trashing the person. I'm trashing the product. If you take offense to that as a person, then you, you misunderstood. You yeah, you misunderstood. Mm, okay, hypocrite. Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> what else did you get, Robert? Did you get anything else? Though? Yes, I got the Iron Factory uh, big blue guy. Whatever the hell his name is, Xenon? I don't even know. What's the big with the little arms? They both have little arms. Big arms helix? and little arms. You mean little helix? Helix, yes. I got helix and it's it's fucking crazy. Like his articulation, like in his arms going out, is a little limited, but it's it's he's so bulky and like he feels like an MMC product, like a big ass. Like he's fucking big. Like he's like a tank. He's the it's, main it's, body of the it's, it's 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 pretty yeah, I'm never I don't think I'm ever gonna combine them. I don't know. You know, mm. I think that's stupid. Try it one time at least. Before. He, he's pretty impressive. He's really big. He's 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 almost like a boy. He's very large, and it's it's very. He's a very impressive bot. Like it's it's wild to have a legends figure that big and impressive, and still in scale with legends. Usually, a big bot that they scale with legends ends up being too small. Like I think they did that with Iron Factory Scorponok. You know? This is the Helix, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Helix is the blue one, right? Because he's the smaller one of the two. Ugh, he's fucking beefy. Yeah, the tan one comes. He's a lot. Yeah, yeah the tan one out. is the big one. The coloring on him, the paint, the materials. He's like a brick. Yeah, I'm telling you, Eye Factory is like the fans toys of Legends. This feels I like agree. MMC made it. It feels like MMC made it. You know, on their normal like reformatted line, it's so solid and. um... 
What else did I get? I got the uh, New Age Megatron. And, you know, it's kind of like if you're coming out of a Prime, I got to get it. If you're coming out of a Megatron, I have to get it, even though I'm not in on the rest of the line. And when I saw the scale, that Megatron was actually like the same height as the Magic Square Prime. I was like, all right, I'm going to get it. It's fine. And I'm glad I got it because the, it doesn't look as bad in person as it does in photos. And the aesthetic, the proportions are real nice. It is like literally the most intuitive, interesting, not simplified, but not overly complicated transformation of a Megatron I've ever experienced. And I've had the DX9, the Takara, the Make Toys. Um, probably forgetting something um but that that is the 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 best I, and then the dx9 legends I've ha i have i have the generation toy legends this is the best megatron transformation like they really nailed it and it's the only issue is there's a couple of tolerance issues it's not tolerance it's like choice of peg like they got like a to get his arms down at one point his uh like laterals like tab into his torso and instead of it just being two big tabs, it's two big tabs with a flange. Like, there's no reason for it to be that tight because, like, the way his his chest encompasses everything, it holds it in anyway. So it's really a bitch to pull him out, and I can't wait to see Bobby rip the arms off of my Megatron. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that off today, so to speak? No, it's going out in the morning. Okay. It's going out in the morning. It's, it's going to be FedEx. You're going to get in a day, and you're going to be at work. That anyway. is going to be a promise that his he will snap the arms off. Yeah, I know. I was gonna go out and do it, and one thing came to the other, and uh, you know, I was like, oh, it's my. And birthday. I still got this star saber here, yeah. waiting, waiting for your instructions. I mean, send it to Matt, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm sure I'll hear from Thanks. Flames Toys in a week. All right, I told Matt. I told Bobby to hold it until I heard back from Flames Toys, but they're taking a long damn time, so they can suck it. I'll get that off to you, Matt. Just send me the head. Just send me the head. Don't send me the rest of the body. Just send me the head. Saturday, I think. That's fine. No worries, man. I got a lot of shit to. Dude, flex on him, Matt. Mm. I got flex some on him. I got some I'll, be, I'll have the Megatron uh, review out tomorrow, hopefully. Mm. I don't know. And I got some birthday presents, but I haven't opened them yet. Yay. Matt, where are you at, where are you at with reviewing these days? In, in, uh, yeah, let's, let me start. Do you have you. Facebook? <laughs> Are Dude, I heard, I heard somebody, somebody, somebody told me recently Facebook is for people who buy their jeans at Walmart. <laughs> that, that's, that could be true. I bought a pair from Walmart. Um, uh, Matt, where, where, how, where are you at with reviewing? Where's the, like, how's the success? How's the passion? Are you still loving it? Are you, what's bothering you about it? Oh, it's I don't know. bother me, I don't think. I, I love it still. I'm, I'm still doing it. I'm, I'm having fun doing it. Um, I'm meeting new people. I do um, a lot of live unboxing things now. I just did one about an hour ago, and I see more and more new people come in. You know, I still see the regulars, and I still love those and everything, but I'm, I'm seeing more new people, and that's really exciting and everything. I get to talk to them and everything, but um, I'm still having a good time. Uh, it's, it may slow down a little bit, you know, because I do have the uh, internship and everything, and I'm I'm out of shape. You know, this internship, is it, this job is going to kick my ass. I mean, it's it's a physical job and everything, and I know it's really hot out there and everything, so um, I may it's slow hot, down. It's hot out there in Arkansas now. A little it's getting, bit, yeah. It's, getting it's still in the. It's still about the 80s. It's still in the 80s. Game. When you're sitting in the sun with no, you know, it's no shade hard. or nothing. Man, our, 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 our weather finally broke this week for, for you too, Justin. Yeah. <clears throat> oh God, thank. Christ. I mean, it's gotten better, but it, it's still, you know, if you're sitting out in the sun, it's still hot. I got sunburned yesterday on my face. <laughs> it was, yeah, like uh, we're so. We're like in the 50s, 60s, yeah, no. sometimes in the 70s. Yeah, and then Are you in, the morning, about during the day? in the mornings, it's like the 40s or 50s. It's mm -hmm. fucking this perfect. Is best, this is the best weather of yeah, the year. Yeah, it's the greatest. Oh. I'm looking forward to coming years. to Washington. I'm looking forward to resting so that I, the nice weather and everything. But <laughs> okay. I still, to answer your question, I'm still having a great time. I'm loving it. Um, my channel's mm -hmm. growing, and um, I'm having a good time. I'm still what's, your, what's your payout like? Uh, about hey, who'd you vote for? Year. About a hundred dollars a month. Two months. Two months. So, I mean, but like, I'm not do you, money. so how how much content are you putting out? I was trying to get stuff uh, once every day, um, at least. Uh, I haven't done anything in the past two days because I've just been tired. Um, I try to at least do something every day, but like I said, it's going to probably slow down. Um, but I'm going to start recording on the, in the weekends. I'm going to tr try to do like you know five. Uh, reviews and so I can just put them <laughs> no, not in a day, dude. So, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. 
So when, when you start doing your internship, so obviously like you've been kind of aside from school, you've had a lot of, a lot more free time recently, right? Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And Lisa's working. Mm-hmm. And with you going to this internship, is it going to be, are you, are you expecting any challenges with budgeting Lisa time with review time? Um, you got to keep track of that. That's important. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's okay if, to sacrifice the time that she's away. But when if she's I home, start sacrificing, if I start sacrificing when she's here, uh, then I definitely will I'll take a big slowdown. I may not get you know five reviews out during the week, and maybe just three or something like that. I just I have to you know manage my time, and uh, you know when she's here, you know I spend time with her, and I got to spend time with Gator because you know I love my dog. And uh, yeah, it should change. We'll see. Gotcha. Um, now, now, what internship is this? Uh, HVAC. It's for a. Uh, I'm, I'm working for a company right now. I'm doing HVAC. Um, is it that guy? What guy? I don't know. The guy you said was gonna call you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that so, the to start you? work internship. Yes, I'm. I'm the Spider Man. Peter Parker. Yeah. So, I, uh, they don't care for that Tony Stark man. Sorry. Greg. He's a good, he's a good guy. Greg. Yeah, sir. I've been telling Matthew to get a, to cut his fucking beard for like eight months, and he's refused. I've told yeah, him yeah. to dress a certain way, clean up a little, sh- trim the ZZ Top beard, and he refused. And yeah. I finally kind of like lost it and like flipped out a little bit on him. He went and trimmed the beard, got a job, no. uh, got a job that day. Nice. I heard the story. I mean, as long as it gets done, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I, I wish you the best, Matt. You know, I hope all this shit works out. You know what's cool though, Matt. You, I think your job's really interesting. Like he sent a bunch of photos of the stuff he was working on, and I was interested. It's pretty cool. And nice. um, it's a lot, it's a lot of shit. It's a lot of stuff to do, man. It's, yeah, it's, but it's it's cool. It looks in, it looks really engaging, and every job you do is different. It's not menial where the, it's the same thing over and over and over. It's always a different challenge, a different issue to address, different people to meet, but. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of smarts and a lot of skill. But the fact is, the fact that you know you want a job, you want to do this, it's physically challenging. You're not focusing on the exercise, but it provides that exercise. So it's that kind of activity that you'll end up getting into good shape because your goal isn't so. getting into shape. Your goal is just doing the activity. Dude, I talked to the guy that I, I trained with. He said uh, he has, you know, the Apple Watch or whatever, some kind of watch. And uh, he do, he walked over, walked over ten or eleven thousand, I think about ten thousand steps, uh, as I was leaving and everything. So I'm I'm probably around that area where I walked. And that's been I don't do that very often. Get, get a Fitbit, man. I have one. I have to charge it. Wrap it around your penis. Mm-hmm. What about you, Justin? Where are you at these days? Like you step back into reviewing a little bit. You've knocked out a couple pieces. I saw the MP44. Yeah, was so up. so like a lot of it's like I don't stress anymore about trying to get what I want done. Like to me, the reviews like I don't I'll make shit off of reviews anymore. Like I think Matt does more views than me uh, on every video he does. <laughs> like pretty much. So hey, Justin, Justin, is there? Bobby said, "I know I saw your." mp44 review was up <laughs> yes <laughs> well, look, the MP, like the mp44 review that shit is gonna be long as fuck yeah exactly like it doesn't you need matter to, you who need to sit does, down and, and, and do it's it. gonna be long as fuck i have yeah. watched most yeah. of your more recent reviews i watched the jazz that you put up the new age jazz was it yeah yeah, I, I, like I've, I've watched most of the ones that you put up, but I have not watched MP44 because that shit. No, I don't blame you. Yeah, so, I I even broke it up into two videos because like I'm like, look, one of this has to be for transforming, and one of it has to be for all the shit that he can do. You know, like because if I show all the stuff he can do, I'm already running like 30 minutes. You know, so yeah. That's a good hour. Yeah. Um, so that's why I was like, yeah, if you want to know transformation. Here's a transformation video. If you want to know what it can do and my thoughts of it, there's that. Um, so that's been fun. And like, like, so the thing is, is like, I don't stress out about getting the latest stuff in and, and reviewed anymore. It's like, cause like sometimes like, like in the past, like one of the things that kind of made me quit is like the first time is like, uh, I don't like to half ass a, a video. And like, if there's a transformation involved, I want to make sure that I can, you know, 
I understand enough to to tell you how to transform it. I don't want to like fumble around, you know. Um, and so if I got like like uh, let's say like the fans' toys motor master, the wee key came out like it's too much time for me to figure out how to get it to transform smoothly and not have a video that needs like a lot of time to to edit out any errors on the transformation, you know. Right. Um, so I don't. I just like. If I want to review it, I will, and if I don't, I won't. You know, and like. So it's it's funny. It's almost come almost full swing back to you, where it's complete hobby now. Yeah, exactly. So and like you know, it, it, a lot of it I do to to uh, to kind of engage with people who were following me every week. You know, like I like talking to those people. Um, so that's that's really the reason I do it. So and like you know, I've had stuff that like. Like, I did those, two of those food fighters. Like, I want to go through the whole thing. Like, I don't give a shit that they got, like, 30 views, you know? So, yeah, it's do, just, like, um, it's fun. It's not, I'm not trying to do it for for making any, any money other reason. or anything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's like, I, I think there's a, a level of kind of almost, I mean, I, I, words kind of overused these days, but empowerment to that. Where... I, think all, I think the only way you should do it, really. If you're not having fun by doing this... I, and you're making it a job. I don't think. Well, you... I think I think that for well, I'll be honest. I think that for me, there's a there's a line for both. You know, no, like I, I can see that. I can see it. Okay. You know, like there's yeah. there's a part of me that does it because I feel obligated to do it because I feel like I have a responsibility to do it because I want it to be mm. timely. I want it to be up. But then there's also a part of me that does enjoy doing it. Some I enjoy doing more than others. Yeah. But it's like that that balance is always in flux. You know, yeah, I mean, I, that's totally understandable. But I, I, I just think you should have fun. I mean, it, sh it will show on your review if you're having fun. If you're not having fun, then you know, people will. I think people will notice that. It and does, and, start, and, and, know, and honestly, like even, stuff. even like the the whole concept of all the time it takes to, to, edit it. Like, I mean, there's a sig if you want to put out a significantly good product, like there is a lot of editing time that makes you go into like not looking. Like you don't know what you're doing and like it's not even sometimes it's not even that you don't know what you're doing it's like when you are looking at your your figure from you know like your arms all the, like try to hold a figure in front of your face at arm's length away like your arms get tired like you know oh, and yeah, then you have a camera do. in front of your face you got to make sure that it's lined up in the shot so then you have to reshoot something because like you know, it's not in the shot at all. So, like, I mean, it's yeah. it's a frustrating process. Uh, so, like, if it's yeah. not fun, who wants to do it, you know? Yeah. And then there's also, like, a, a, a you know, an, an element of, uh, there's, like, a, for, for me, anyway, who's typing away? There's, That's like, nice an element. Is it picking up on my thing? A I'm little sorry. bit, a little bit. A little bit. There's like an element of like craftsmanship to it for me too. Just 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 to, just to keep all cards on the t table, like, and not of the the shooting, but of the editing. Sometimes I take more joy in the editing than I do in the review. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, that. just trying new things and seeing what works and seeing seeing what makes it kind of more streamlined or faster or kind of more palatable. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when doing audio stuff, like a lot of times a sit down Saturday or four dummies or force Friday stuff is a lot more audio driven and like, like learning little tricks you can do to kind of cut up audio and make it seem seamless. And, you know, sometimes it works better than others, but like, like I just get my kicks on that shit yeah. rather than the actual content necessarily. And sometimes it's like, a, like I said, like a blend. One of the things that I've noticed, like when I was like, before I took my break from it, like one of the things I always tried to make sure is like all my my like switches and like points of thought and stuff had like transitions and stuff which like that gets really hard too because then you have to see if like does my my audio sound right when i'm coming to you. i'm like now i'm just like end of thought i'm like i'm just jump cutting right to the next thing because most people do i don't think anybody cares if i have like a wipe or whatever going on i'm like and it saves me time so you know yeah and like I, I i think also in the editing process is where you start to really like hone a style mm -hmm. i feel like you know like you really start to figure out what it is that makes you different than the next person you know hopefully i guess and for the record justin actually i prefer when you wipe 
Well, uh, I, so I, I, I understand that. <laughs> well, that's, but you know what? I, I don't always that. have time to wipe, Greg. Sometimes I just got to get out there and shake some hands. If you know what fucking, I mean. Sometimes I'm in a fucking rush. <laughs> that's hardcore, man. That's some corn <laughs> shit right there. I'll be at TFCon um, in two weeks. I, I figured <laughs> out that, um, which, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, are, I was talking to them. I started adding pictures, you know, while I'm talking about the uh, final thoughts of my uh, review. And because um, I love taking pictures of my stuff and everything. So just to blend in that with my review was, I think, a, a, a good move on my part and everything. And it's just, it showcases my pictures also and everything. So it kind of, like you just said, you figure out, you know, kind of your niche in what you, you're reviewing everything and all that stuff. You know, Bobby loves, you know, I've been muted for like five minutes. I didn't realize it. Bobby no, I thought you that. logged off. I was. Kind of uh, I just had it. I can't tell when it's on mute or on mute. And I was like, okay, either they're ignoring me or I'm on mute. I mm-hmm. can't tell. Let me click this button and I'll tell. Bobby loves like the when he does when he edits, he does like an audio overlap, like a quarter second. It'll be like, and this is the next figure. And now coming up, you'll <laughs> have like the end of one word overlap, the beginning of the next word. That's the Bobby style. Well, so 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 usually when that happens is because I'm trying to cut out some bullshit that's just unnecessary and slowing the video down. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to cut, I'm trying to get it as tight as I can so it seems seamless, but it's just like, I, I like, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's like, it's that's that's me working on something. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you, Greg? Mm-hmm. Like, like, like Greg, recently I, I saw in the chat, you like posted some photos of your shelves, like building your shelves up. Mm-hmm. Um, like so, where where are you at these days? Oh, you know, I'm just here and there, hospital a lot. Um, I'm you should get there. a shelf up there. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> just for the legend stuff. Put your legend <laughs> stuff up in the hospital. If just they bring just a little duffel a bag full out. of legends. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, actually, I usually bring some stuff with me. All the doctors are like, "Ooh, did you build that?" And I'm like, "Uh, yes, yes. out of yes. medical yes. supplies here in the hospital." <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, this. Uh, you should see what I do if I go to Home Depot. Depot. Um, I'm getting there on the stuff that I need as far as like season one and two and movie. Um, I uh, I think I'm I think I'm short four characters now. So, and a defenser, defense, defense or defenser, yeah, whatever. Um, it's defenser. Oh, de- defense. It's like TV. Desanitizer. <laughs> De- um, Defensor. Why didn't they have a sanitizer? That would be a great name. I don't know. The best, the best thing that came out of the movie was De- Dispensor, which was the little Mountain Dew mm, guy. The Mountain Dew, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a so, good. yeah, I'm just kind of picking up. A, I'm going to pick up a couple odds and ends here and there and see how I feel. Um branching out a little bit good stuff i wouldn't have gotten before now that i'm kind of now that i see the light at the the tunnel with you getting so close and Mm -hmm. starting to iron out the shelves like talk about how your display process is going because you got to pretty much be ironing it all out now i I would i would imagine well whenever we move i'm going to invest in new shelves but i'm going to keep these bookcase i'm going to keep what i have now um because i don't want to like get some really nice heavy glass shit upstairs and then have to haul all that stuff back downstairs you know just throw it out the um, window oh I guess I could just leave it and buy new ones right mm-hmm. no, yeah money the- bags um I don't know I'm just trying to figure out what works I'm not rushing it you know I might just do a couple up a day and just kind of see what I like let it grow on me for a couple of days if I don't like it then I can rearrange it um because like season one takes up two shells but season two only takes up one shelf but so, I don't want it to be like, like two ass elbows either I mean I want it to be like you don't know, want to be like mine. like mine well sure if you want to say well, that. Mine's, mine's ass elbows that's fine I got a lot of stuff man. I got a lot of stuff on purpose. Hey, Greg. Yes, sir. Have you seen Raising Dion? Is that on Netflix right now? Yes. Uh, no, I haven't seen it, but um, Kit was taking a nap, and she had the TV on the uh, the PlayStation on the movie, the media channel, like the media screen, and I saw I saw that, 
like as an option on there on Netflix. You know, and I was wondering that? what it was about. John Ritter's son. Really? Nice. Hey, Bobby, John Ritter's son. You love John Ritter. I love John Ritter. You know who he voiced? Come and knock him. Uh, Flight of Dragons. Yes. Yeah, you know I know that. Um, dude, I told you, like I told a... you, if they ever make Flight of Dragons figures, I'm in for the line. Oh, they should redo that and make it a new live-action movie. Disney should Oh, do dude, I think that would work. Have, have you seen a lot of Raising Dion, Bobby? What do you say? Have you seen Raising Dion? No, I saw Raising Arizona. Oh boy! Oh, I've seen that. That's it's awesome. awesome. It's what about, same about what about yesterday? Anybody see it yesterday? I don't I know. I was interested in seeing that. <clears throat> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Like there's a like a power down on the planet, and if like let's uh, let's let's just stay on topic though for the last half hour. What do you say? Well, I gotta go. <laughs> like, <laughs> I gotta go. Well, I gotta go. So I figured I'd derail it. Okay. Surf and turf. Surf and turf time. Are you oh, you're doing surf and turf? Ooh. Yeah, but odd surf and turf. I don't know. It's it's good, but, but you wouldn't like it. Salmon it's, and it's, uh, potato got, and tater tots. I got, I got, I got uh, yeah, hamburgers and salmon croquettes. No, uh, get, get some uh, strip steaks and tater some tots. salmon and some uh, oysters, Rockefeller. Are you hopping that off, sounds Robert? Sounds good to me. Yeah, I gotta hop off. All right, happy birthday. Happy birthday Thanks, tater Bobby. I, I happy, was happy that. birthday. I was expecting that birthday phone call and it never came. Well, I thought I'd give it to you on 300. I thought that'd be more special. Right. Oh, but then you bailed on us, so now it's our fault. Yeah. <laughs> see? You see? All right. All right. Well, um, enjoy the rest of the show, gentlemen. I'm proud to be a part of it. Maybe maybe we have 300 more. Even hey, if I'm dead uh, by then. Just I just want to let you know your subscription expired at 300. You're going to need oh, to reel. Oh, boy. So. Another 250. <clears throat> we were all discussing you know, it in the. the Illuminati, Illuminati chat you've got going on. Um, oh, you're not in that Illuminati. one. <laughs> but, the Illuminati uh, of Illuminati. Yeah. So, if me and Matt are dead by three, by six hundred, just like why is it like, me gonna be dead too? I don't understand. We're, I mean, we're I don't going know together. That, well, but, me, me and you are like, uh, what's that? Uh, the two girl movie? What's it called again? Cheech and Chong. No, the girls jump off the cliff with the car. Oh, no, 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 Robert and Matthew. Mm-hmm. We're gonna jump off uh, a cliff in a in a in a transformer. Rap hits first film, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you. Mm-hmm. And the and the reason why I know that funny story like is him. because <laughs> shut the fuck up. I was I was watching the Love movie, him. and when he popped up, I was like, whoever this guy is should he play sucks. Gambit. Uh, mm-hmm. and I stuck I stuck around through the credits to learn his name so that I could tell people. This is the guy that should get to play Gambit. Oh, he would be a it. great Gambit. During oh, that period, he would have been fucking perfect. He'd still be good. Nah, he's too old now. Too he's old too to old. get into training. <laughs> I like Brad Pitt, though. I like most Justin, of you coming to the Halloween party? Uh, no, not this year. Sorry. God bless. I'm coming. Are you? No. See, you that, see, a... see, Matt, that's something where if you were to fly in, I'd be like, you know what? It might be worth it. Really? When I can't. You, I can't when I, I, like, I couldn't promise it. It's this weekend. I couldn't promise I it. I don't know. I can't. But like, like I knew the crab feast was not worth it. Whereas, mm-hmm. this one I'd be like, this could be worth it. I can't promise it because you never know what vibe the party's gonna but go in. But. Crab I'm fest is WrestleMania. Crab fest, crab fest would have been worth it. Yeah, crab fest would have been fucking worth it because I would have made sure you were involved in that little little tussle that me and seven other people <laughs> little tussle? had. Tussle? Ah, wow, dude, I'm not getting between y'all. There's here, no man. way I could put hands on Matt ever. I just couldn't do it. You, oh, he's scared of you, Matt. He's scared. I'm terrified. He's not yeah, he is. It's because you got low. You got low gravity. <laughs> he can't push you into a table. When y'all having it, Bobby? It's a Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Uh, All right, guys. Look, I love y'all. All right, happy love 300. You too. Don't uh, don't eat too much, man. All right. All right. Bye. Let's get into some questions. All right, are we going to start recording now that Robert's gone? Yeah, yeah, let's go. In five, four, <laughs> three. What's up, SCU guys? What are your top five MP transformations? What are your top five masterpiece oh, moments? What's M- What MPs have the greatest payoff from transformation? Sean M. Sean Mac. What's up, Mac? Dude, the one that always sticks out to me is that Bumblebee hood. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. when it slides up into his chest, like that's just mm. one that will always stand out to me as being like a classic moment. That's one of the ones I feel like is is like, it's simple, but it's so satisfying, you know. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Like I think I think it I feel like with that bumblebee that is the, the thing that kind of made like, 
Well, that's the masterpiece transformation. Like, I can't think of anything on Sideswipe that does that. Nope. Um, I can't even I think, think of anything Sunstriker really on there. MP10 that does that. Dude, that, 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 that should be on top. MP10 back to truck mode this week, I, I would have rather put my penis in a vice. Damn. Really? Yeah, For MP10? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, going from truck to robot, I can I can stomach. Going from robot to truck makes me fucking nauseous. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna uh, put sun like I said, I'm gonna put sun tracker in that uh, MP transformations. And are we talking about are we talking third party? Or we're just talking about yeah, just period. Messages? I would say just period. Oh uh, shit. Like, the thing is, like, I, I hate fucking transforming figures. I, mean, I, I, I do. I, I'll just be honest. I, I fucking hate it. It's very rare that I find something satisfying, um, or or even elegant to the point where it appeals to me. With the exception of some of the legend stuff, like I, I like a lot of the Magic Square transformations. Like that's probably yeah. some of my favorite transformations. Those Legend B man, that's a cool transformation. Yeah, a lot of the new figures. age, like the, the even the new age, like the uh, the Ironhide that mold that transformation. I like yeah. a lot. The legs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, um, generally, like I don't like that shit. So I'm trying to think about the characters on my shelf and if there's any, um. The the quake wave the first that that quake wave the first time I transformed that I remember being like God damn that's special. I like the uh, the Dinobots for fans toys. I always yeah, I they always all... mention that like the way things kind of went into the into the legs there is like yeah totally different than what we've seen before you know. So I, w- I would put uh, DX9 carry up there as one of my favorites. Yeah, like that's good. One. That's one of probably that's probably my favorite DX9 figure of all, actually, to be honest. Well, uh, Power Cloud was pretty good. Uh, Chrome Dome and Smart Robin from a uh, fans project. Yeah, they were really good. Like those are the kinds of figures that like I'm like, why didn't fans project ever get into like going into the bigger size? You know, I mean, I guess they did make toys, right? <coughs> so or a fans hobby. Yeah, but like I mean, mm-hmm. like, like that's the kind of thing is like, I feel like those figures were. Nice and easy to transform. They were fun, you know. They they felt durable, you know. Like I didn't I didn't feel like they were really like they weren't difficult to to mess with, and they were fun, you know. And like yeah, I would say that that the way that hood slid around and stuff like that again, simple, but like I would put that on par with the the sliding chest of or the the tuck away chest on Bumblebee, you know. Yeah, but so. yeah, that that smart Robin flank area mm-hmm. all of that like i re- like the way that the hood slid down and chrome dome from one part of the body to the other i remember being like holy shit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah for a while i actually was using them on my mp shelf as my as my uh headmaster representations because they, they did kind of fit the size of the mp cars but uh i don't know i replaced them eventually well uh, i say yeah, i've replaced but... them but i've only got two of the headmasters at this point because make toys you know Good stuff. Fucking make toys, man. Uh, what about the X Transbot Stunticons? I think they're fun transformations so far, except right. for Drag Strip. Mm. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not. I like, like. I mean, they're fine, but like the Wild Rider is fucking scary. Uh, the yeah. Crack Rock is solid, but like I, I would never transform it back unless I absolutely had to. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, I like Drag Strip. I'm mean, not Drag Strip. I'm sorry, Dead End. I thought Dead End was a fun transformation too. I think I'll Where throw the like? uh, the Fans Toys Motor Master in there because like just like. He may not have the quote unquote MP moment, but like the fact that he I think it's you know, impressive. It's, it's they impressive yeah, it's that you were able to, to make it not fun come to out to the it's same not thing. Fun. Yeah. I don't think any fan can you name one fan's toys transformation that that's fun. Any well, I think the Quake Wave and the Dinobots. Okay. Well I'm wrong with that shit. But but I think that, that after that they, they took a uh, they, they decided they like switched up their style to like, nope, we're going for the best possible alt mode and robot mode, and we don't give a fuck about the process in between. Yeah, they said that about the A6 movie stuff, and they're like, fuck it, we don't care if you like the transformation or not, we're gonna make them look good. Yeah, that's all they, I think that's the, and like, I get it, I understand that, but I think that the, I I agree with Justin in the sense that, like, what they were able to do with that Motor Master was just kind of like, holy fuck. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the fact that you can take MP10's trailer and put it on the robot, like, I mean, yes, it's a hollow trailer, right? But, like, I mean, like, MP10 didn't Still do it. Still a lot it. of panels. Yeah. yeah. I mean, MP10 trailer's hollow. Yeah. <laughs> well, Greg, what do you think? Do you, you like any uh, transformations? Or? I hate Transformers. Yeah. I quit. <laughs> I quit. I'm going to say this luck. 
All right, put it all together in one little sentence. That's awesome, man. Um, for tree, uh, yeah, I like the I like all the Dinobots. Um, I haven't met a Dinobot I don't like, as far as transformation. Um, I had something in my head earlier and I completely forgot it now. Um, they so, Bumblebee reminded me of something else. Um, Cliff Jumper. Oh, the the, uh, the, uh, the ladders. Oh, oh from definitely, 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 yeah. definitely, definitely. That's um, a good MP moment right there. Because you're like, where to go? Where to go, George? Where to go? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah, good my looking for it. Shit. Um, back cube. Uh, anything back cube. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much anything back cube. Omnigonics. Omnigonics. Uh, what was that fucking terrible Jet Fire that Dust let me hold that I broke into pieces? Oh, Dirt Fire? Kronos? No, not Kronos. Kronos. The, uh, the no, other one. It wasn't Kronos. Oh, um... Dirt Fire. Yeah, 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 with the hands. Yeah, and it had the, uh, the old lady face. Was it like Mech Ideas? No. Yeah. No, it wasn't so. Mech Ideas. Mech Ideas is the... That was the twin. Jump the, yeah. yeah, the Jump Starters. Oh, I know. I, I have him on the floor. I use him four times. He's dirt yeah. fire. I, don't, I forgot who makes him, but yeah. So the next Daca? question was... was Daca toys? I don't know. Anyway. No, it was something else. If I'm okay. missing any continuities, please feel free to add them. The below questions are for everyone, so we'll go piece by piece. This question's been in for a while. This is from P.A. Ron. Mechaform. <clears throat> what? Mechaform, yep. He said, what is your favorite continuity... Uh, let's go round robin with that, uh, Matt. Shit, I need to be bigger. Uh, um, right. you want me to come back to you? Yeah. Okay, Justin. Yeah. Uh, so like of Transformers, like yeah. Like, I mean G one, I guess. Greg, Matt and I have to be careful because we don't want to jeopardize our stasis lock uh, <laughs> <That is> memberships. <laughs> our status, <laughs> our status is pretty high up right now. We're we're really we're big timers right now on stasis lock, so. Yeah, we're uh, we're in the contract uh, reviewing phase. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to get some uh, bonus uh, money and stuff and everything. Silent did you bro. know? Did you know you can put prototypes in a 401k? Uh, yes. Dakota's going to show us how. Yeah. Nice. Good. Um. I I mean I got to say G1 just mm-hmm. because that's my age. Um, I did like Prime as well. Mm-hmm. But, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, I just got to say animated. Yeah, I mean, I love animated. I think it's one of the best stories, but like, my heart will always be with G one. You know? Oh yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's hard well, to say if there's any I'm other sure. continuity I prefer. Like, there's, there's certainly the comics do better jobs telling the stories of G one and all that. But like, like honestly, like I fell in love with Jazz the the Porsche and I, and Cliff Jumper also the Porsche and you know like Trax mm. the Corvette. You know, like I don't really want. Not that, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, and you, don't he, want, you don't want Beast Wars, just like yeah, you can't I, say the storytelling isn't there because I mean, you had like really good plots like Megatron and the Giant Purple Griffin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly, that's a good one. And Cr- Crimson, uh, you know, when Warpath goes back to medieval times and nobody questions the fact uh, that no, 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 he went back to medieval right. times. I, my, honestly, my I, personal favorite is the uh, the episode with the uh, whatever whatever those guys are the ones who sing all the time. Underneath oh, the water, oh, that was, was terrible. That spray? Oh, um, terrible. What was that? Something. Season was, two, man, is yeah. fucking trash. That's the one that's fucking C minor. Trash. We're talking about C yes, minor. C minor. Yes. That I don't know. I'd say season ever. three. Is... Dude, I disagree. I actually season think season three, three has, has some of the better episodes. Oh yeah. Prom- uh, season yeah. one is the best. Like we all agree there, right? Like. Mm-hmm. The story is the most solid and kind of concrete in season one. And then, but dude, season two just has so much cheese ball shit. Like, I feel like the most cheesy shit that people think about when they think about G1 is from season two. Mm-hmm. G3 had one of my favorite with the uh, prom, Promal, uh, uh, what was call it? The, they had all, uh, Call of the Primitives. Call of the Primitives. Yeah, that, the That's one, one I love, ones. one of my favorite episodes from season three is when they take Galvatron to that like psychologist planet like, fucking yeah dude that fucking shit is <laughs> tight 
Um, all right, let me uh, continue. Uh, uh, my favorite continuity. See, that's, that's tricky, man. Because like the one that means the most to me is G one for sure. But like, I think my favorite might actually be like the Fall of Cybertron, War for Cybertron one. Like, that's the one that I'm like. Mm. I like that's the one that I'm like, man, I love being in this world. I want to see this explored more. It seems real. It seems like the consequences matter. It's like, I mean, because you're playing it, I don't know, but I mean, I don't get that same thing from the the one that was supposed yeah. to be G. Yeah, yeah, that one. No, I um, agree with you, and and it is like, and that's that's kind of what I said. Like the story of G1 maybe have been told in other forms better. You know, like Devastation to me is kind of or not Devastation. uh War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron, like it all feels very G1 at its core, but just G1 while it's still on Cybertron, you know? So Right. G1 right. On, on Red Bull. Because really the only continuities that I like are G1, the War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron, and then IDW, you know, up until the Siege stuff. And I haven't read the Siege stuff, but I just can't speak on it yet. Uh, Matt, let's come back to you, so to speak. Uh, G1. I mean, I... I'd have to throw Prime in there. Prime was really good. I think uh, Prime was an awesome. I agree with the War of Cybertron. That's a good. I, mean, I, I, I like all of them. You know, that's just right. me. But um, G1, I'm always going to love G1. And Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. No, I think, I think that's all. a valid. I think that's a valid answer. Like you love the entire franchise, but your favorite is where it began. Yep. And if oh, I'm yeah. honest with you, I think that's the. I don't care how many people are like Beast Wars is the best. All that stuff. Like the reason. There's a reason. That, you know, the Earth Earthrise shit is all G1 and not, you know, yeah. Armada yeah. and all that stuff. Like, the fans started here. Like, yes, Beast Wars may have had a better writing and better plot because it was, like, you know, uh, a forward-moving plot, it, it, not a good. plot of the day. But, you know, like, it's not G1. Stacey so. Lockhart did not say any of that stuff. I don't know Beast Wars. <laughs> No, well, and, and like no, like I mean, it, I, it's the same know. thing. Like I think that animated has a better story than G one. Like it does, but you know it's not G one. That's that's the the crux of it, and that's why you know Earth Rise is not a bunch of hmm. animated figures coming out again. It's, it's not G one. Um, what is your least favorite continuity? We'll we'll go back around, Justin. Uh, it's got to be the Armada. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's the uh. It's not Armada. It's uh, goddamn. What's the one that's after Energon? Beast Wars? Beast uh, machines. Beast machines. Is that the one that took place on Cybertron again? And eventually, mm-hmm, yeah. like, it ends with like, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, it's like thirty years old now. Um, it ends with like the planet getting like really bad CGI grass and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah that was that was fucking stupid. It was a hippie show. But... Yeah. Uh, Greg. Um. It's a tie between Cybertron and Energon, probably. Could yeah, like be. I feel like Armada is not fair to say Armada because I think Armada was kind of a cool concept. Mm-hmm. I think it goes off the rails for Energon and Cybertron. Um, what about, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead go I was going to say, but I do agree with the way that Beast Machines kind of ended. Right, right, right. Um, I'll give Matt a little bit more time because <coughs> it's painful for him to answer. So once again, I'm going back to the wording of the question, right? Least favorite. And in that regard, it's Beast Wars for me. Because I blame Beast Wars for the problems of the franchise. That being said, it's not it's it's not what I feel is the worst. If it was if it was what is the worst continuity, I would have a completely different answer and it would start with Bay and it would end with verse. Hmm. But my least favorite is Beast Wars. You need to see some some Machine Wars or some uh, Beast Machines. <clears throat> That'll change so your I've mind on Bay. So, no, 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 no. Because so once again, like I've seen it, and Beast Machines is a lower quality thing, but Beast Machines wouldn't exist without Beast Wars, which is why Beast Wars is my least favorite. I see. Uh, Matt. Victory. I'm just going. To, I've never Interesting. watched. Interesting. So. It's pretty uh, bad too. Uh, um, yeah, it's terrible. It's fucking terrible. It's awful. Uh, I did like. I like Headmaster. Headmaster's really good. Head, um, let's see. Headmaster felt like it was not, like it was like season four of yeah of Transformers. It's, also, it's not. It's not really good. Yeah. It's fine. It, yeah. Th- well, no. No. Headmasters is not like really good, but it's neither is G one. Like it's really no, not. no no no. But but yeah. Matt was like Headmasters is really good. I'm just saying like no oh, no uh, it's not. I I'm mean just, well I meant what. 
it was just nostalgic. You know, it's, yeah. like you just said, it's it's like season four. You know, it's but it, but it's also nostalgic. I feel like because we see it much later, like we didn't know it was a thing. Yes, I would and agree then, with and that. And we're just like, ooh, we'll take a little. I'll take a little bit more. I don't care how it tastes. I'll take a little bit more. <laughs> like that's how I feel. I like would it. say Beast Machine is one of my least favorite too. I mean, the, the whole hippie, you know, prime is a kind of a you know meditating stuff. The and seeds like, of the future are you, buried in the past. Do you yeah. hate? Do you hate a peace of mind? Matt, like being, do, at peace, being at peace with yourself, you hate that. I do. I hate that, man. I mean, you, might, you might, you might, you might want to, you might want to, you might want to think about that, dude. You might no, I mean, I'm gonna fight somebody at TFCon. Man. <laughs> <laughs> See a short little fat, you know, guy trying to fight. Hey, somebody. are we, are we gonna try to get together for TFCon at all? I'd hope so. We're, okay. me and uh, uh, Rob standing we, 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 we need to. Um, no, I mean before that. Oh, before that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there on Thursday. I'm getting there on Thursday, so if y'all are getting there on Thursday, we can do something. Like maybe stop by that. Are you getting a car? Rent a car? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stop by the stop by the house on the way. When are y'all getting there? Uh, no, when I'm you... saying on the way. Stop by my house on the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, where are you, where are you flying Reagan. into, Matt? Reagan. That's not on the way, Bobby. No, but just swing up. <laughs> Let's drive past TFCon. <laughs> How, How far are you away from? I'm like 35 minutes. Oh, that's no okay. I'm, that's fine. From right, that's how yeah. close you're. I don't think you're that close to Reagan. I'm pretty close. I think I think I've flown. No, when I draw, when I fly into uh, when depends I went to on, it actually it depends on what time you're coming in. But we'll, we'll talk yeah, about that's it. That's true. Yeah, the, yeah, the the traffic. Yeah. Um, yeah if you I'll be in there Thursday. So the next question was, if you had the chance to change or tweak your favorite continuity, what aspects would you change? Would you use any aspects from other continuities? Uh, we'll go back to Justin. Hold on, I'm sorry, I was Googling something. You uh, are an you hour any, from Reagan, Bobby. If you had any chance to change or tweak your favorite continuity, what aspects would you change? Okay, well, for my, you, my non-G1 favorite would continuity, you, I'd would give you, animated you, another season. Would you use any aspects from other continuities? No. That's the other part of the question. No, I would just go ahead and continue the story because uh, animated was using aspects of G1 anyway, so keep doing what you're doing, just finish the story. And you live an hour from Reagan, right now. Greg, <laughs> um, well, you're making it pr- come through. What are you doing? Who, whose team are you on? Greg, if we're uh, <laughs> if we're correcting Bobby, also Thumb and Louise was Brad Pitt's ninth movie. Um, oh. oh yeah, fuck yeah! This is the title of episode three hundred. Correcting Bobby. <laughs> correcting Bobby. <laughs> um, but uh, blah, 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 blah. um, oh no, man. I can't. I couldn't tweak anything about G one without rewriting the whole fucking thing. I mean, honestly, it's kind of perfect the way it is. It's kind of perfectly imperfect. Mm-hmm. Um, right, right. I, I feel you on that. So, yeah, I don't think there's any perfect continuity. If it was me, I would just get rid of that third video game just so I didn't have to say everything but that third video game. Third video game. Which one was the third one? Oh, the one the movie. It mixed the one that tied in the, the movie first. Oh, oh God, yeah. That doesn't count. Dark There's Spark. A... Rise of the Dark Spark. Yeah, Dark whatever movie. the fuck. Yeah. Um, but I would love to see that continuity go on. Uh, you know what I remember back in the day? When when the old, uh, when the first Bayverse movies were coming out, and like I'm like, there's a Transformer game coming. So I bought that like original Transformer game. And like, like they talk about how it's like this open world and all this stuff. And I'm like, this thing is trash. Like, <laughs> I think I played it for like 20 minutes. I'm like, this sucks. And uh, of course, you can't return video games. So uh, I, I think that it. one got donated to Goodwill. Mm. Uh, that a sh- jackass move of you. Yeah, what can you do? Uh, to answer your question, Bobby, I'm trying to get to me. Um, I always go back to, man, ever since you said this, uh, I think it's a great idea. They would show, you know, between season two and the movie, they would give us a season or. Um, a season in between that. I think you've said that before. Like you yeah. would like to. Yeah, what, that two point five. Yeah, with not what happened between that you know, twenty like years. Two. Yeah, because yeah. you had a lot of stuff. You know, where why are there no combiners set for you know Devastator in the movie and stuff and everything? So that would have been pretty. Every time I uh, I always think about, it, I think that's be a, that would have been a wonderful idea to do that. So that's the only thing I would tweak about G one, my favorite. So. Uh, and then he says, I appreciate all the great content you guys bring every week. Keep up the great work. Would you That's guys want to see, like with Earthrise, what if Transformers made an Earthrise TV show that was really like went through all the stuff related to, uh, you know, the uh, actual 
like G1 cartoon. Like they picked out like the best episodes, like the most story, uh, the story driven ones. And like, just like basically remade those episodes, um, as like modern animation and stuff like that. Would anybody be down? Like better story, maybe fleshed it out, like fleshed out good G1 into, you know, kind of like IDW did, I guess, in a sense. I would, yeah. Am I the only I mean, one who kind of wants to see that? I would love no. it. Yeah, I mean, I'd be up for that. I, like, I'm up for any of the expansion of the kind of... Because, like, even the War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron, as well as the IDW, is kind of like a reboot of G1, right? Which, which is what, to me, Transformers is. So, like, anything that expounds upon any of those, like, I'm, I'm good on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um... Our next one is from Tyler G, who we all know, fellow Cool Table member. And he says, hello, SCU crew. For those who aren't a fan of G1 tune accurate MPs and the shift in masterpiece towards that aesthetic, does the same feeling apply to the Beast Wars MPs, or do you think it's more acceptable for the Beast Wars MPs to be tune accurate because of the 3D animation compared to the G1 cell shaded animation? Love the show. Paperwork is almost done to trade Greg for Dalton. Matt, your Stasis Live Benefits package is in the mail. Tyler. Nice. Nice. Um, so for me, I'll just answer this real, real quick. Uh, I don't care. I don't, I don't, I like it. Like, so the thing is, does it apply to Beast Wars? No, it doesn't apply to Beast Wars because I don't give a shit because I don't give a shit a bit about Beast Wars. Mm-hmm. However, in the same breath, I do find the stuff like the DX nine stuff that they did but like the the kind of more mechanical look to beast wars type aesthetic far more interesting than the mp takara beast Wars stuff that's based off of the tune because i just i like one of the big turnoffs for me from that cartoon was that i thought it looked dumb mm-hmm. uh justin yeah, so like I'm I'm very big on the I don't care about the cartoon accuracy. I I would prefer the accurate vehicle and then you know the bot is what the bot is afterwards. Um <clears throat> so with that in mind like yeah, I I like I I don't know if I necessarily care for Beast Wars. I think like you Bobby that I think even straying from the source material and actually giving them some like some mechanical bits about them makes more sense to me like it probably would have drawn me in because like i was in the same idea like like i don't like that like the like g1 transformer sets like they come there their thing their little scanner do jigger like thinks that automobiles and stuff are life and transforms them to look kind of like that to blend in and i guess in the sense like you know beast wars the same way because it's transforming them into actual life instead of mechanical life but like in my head i don't like the life that they're being transformed into being actual like organic life, you know? Right. Um, so like if, if Optimus was a gorilla, but like a mechanical type of gorilla to an extent, like he could have, he could have still had his fur, but like, I want him to be, you know, like maybe he has like pistons in his arms and shit like that, you know, like to make him look more, more robotic in a way. Like I might've been more in on that. And I think that aesthetic works. Now, if you want like real, full on like you know you want your mp line like to me the reason that i'm not into needing to look cartoon accurate is because you know i always i always i said it before i'll say it again i feel like they didn't look like their car because of you know animation limitations things like that like i don't want a janky ass looking car uh or character you know as an mp representation it's just not what i'm into with Beast Wars, like, I feel the same way. Like, if you can make Dinobot a realistic-looking, like, raptor, then he should look like a realistic-looking raptor, you know? Because he only looks that way because of the limitations of CGI at the time. So, that's my opinion. But, I, I mean, I'm even more so on the, you know, <coughs> go ahead and just take creative liberties with it if you want to get me more interested in that type of thing. Right. Uh, Greg. I like the cartoon accurate masterpieces, so this question I don't really think would apply to me. Right. Matt. 
Same. I, mean, I, I like both. I do love what you mentioned, the DX9. I love the robotic ones, too, but I do love the show accurate. I mean, I think they're beautiful pieces uh, that Takara has done and everything. So. And, and let me go and say that, too. I think the Takara ones are beautiful as well because I think that they do what they're trying to do mm-hmm. beautifully. Mm-hmm. I just don't like what I just don't like what yeah. they're trying to do, and, and it's not their fault; it's the designer's fault. Yeah, and, and and I will say I think to an extent, making a Beast Wars character more, you know, screen accurate, it does make more sense because of the, the CGI. I still think you should maybe look to do you know a level above what the CGI did, but like I mean that that kind of yeah. comes out with an actual physical thing versus you know janky polygons and stuff like that. Um, I just don't Who feel like G1 works the same way though because like, you know, they they the animation cuts down on lines and stuff like that to make it easier to animate, right? So like it's right. kind of like the intent should have been more than what the cartoon allowed at the time. That's what Who did that was it Generation Toys did the uh the Primal that kind of you know kind of a box Yeah, that was fucking mechanical? badass as well. Yeah, yeah I love that, that too. Nice uh, yeah, I love that too. Um next one is from Shay is kind of a similar question. So we should be able to fly through this one, I think. But he says, Dear SCU crew, I was wondering which version of the Transformers origin, excuse me, is your favorite? And if you could design your own ideal origin story, what would it be? My favorite is the aligned continuity origin written in the Covenant of Primus, where Primus created the 13 Primes in order to defeat Unicron. And after their sacrifice, the Transformers race was created. Thanks for the entertainment. Listening to you guys is like listening to a group of mates chatting about their favorite hobby. Hmm. Um, so on, honestly, for this one, I like the G1, but I'll, I'll tell you, I, I see G1 because um, the G1 origin kind of shifts and changes kind of through it. But like the way I see it is that the Quintessons created two different types of. Uh, Transformers, one for like a serving class and one for a military class. The military class eventually decided that they were going to take over as, you know, like, uh, which makes sense to me because like, why would you fight somebody else's war when their war doesn't align with the way that you see the world? So I'm good with that. And then the servant class kind of took up arms against them to create the Autobots versus the Decepticons. And I, I like that a lot, but I also like the IDW origins a lot as well, where a lot of it kind of, uh, centers around Megatron and him being kind of almost like this, like radical, uh, political figure that just sees a different way of life and the quality of life and what people are, uh entitled to basically in, in terms of just i mean like i don't know how else to say it but like almost like constitutional rights and that the you know your quote unquote alt mode doesn't dictate your destiny and i i, I like that a lot as well so I, i'd probably tie the two and i i wouldn't change anything about either i think they're both kind of brilliant in their own regard especially the g1 cartoon for like a kids cartoon series like that's a pretty advanced uh i feel like you know concept to kind of grasp uh justin yeah i i gotta go with the g1 cartoon um i've never been a huge fan of the the alternate ways like no offense but i don't really care for the 13 primes thing it's not my cup of tea right me neither me neither um Hmm. greg yeah any opinion um. No. <laughs> uh, Matt. You know, I like the All Hell Megatron, uh, series from you know the comics and everything. I yeah, wish they would. Yeah. I wish they would do like an All Hell Starscream, All Hell Prom, uh, Optimus Prime. I wish would they did an origin story for all of those. I, I, they did kind of one with the you know the spotlights, but. I think all hell Megatron went into more details and had more issues and everything. So I would love to see something like that in the comics again, because all hell Megatron is a really great story. And I think they threw in some other characters like, you know, to hit their background and everything. I think I would right. like to see that. So. Oh, we, the question was gone when you asked me and my sister had just texted me to say she got home. Okay, okay. So I was going to sidetrack, um, but I still don't have an opinion. I do love I, all hell Megatron though. Yeah, it's I great. A pocket 
read their version of that. Thank you. That's very fucking, much that, that 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 whole the way they laid that shit out in IDW, the all the stuff between mm-hmm. Impactor Prime, uh, uh, Megatron Whirl, like all that shit is is masterfully done, in my opinion. Okay, so. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying to move through some of these so we can knock out as many as possible. He says, hey, uh, just some random midday bullshit, but if G1 had taken place in a high school setting, which characters would you have be which kids in school? For example, I'd have Bumblebee be a nerdy freshman. The Constructicons would be the kids that went to trade school, and the Stunicons would probably be the cool kids smoking in the bathroom, a la sometimes they come back style. Nicktimus Prime. Uh, let me think if I have anything for this. Um, I don't know, but I have the Dinobots being the bullies. Uh, yeah. Justin, go ahead. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll be right back. I gotta grab something. I'll be right back. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess. I guess your Star Scream has to be the class clown. Um. <laughs> yeah. Or the uh, suck up. I feel. I feel like. Uh, Wheeljack, I mean, uh, Wheeljack and Perceptor, your your nerdy science lab kids, right? Mm. Uh, I don't know. What else? Who else do we have? Optimus Prime's your football captain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. He, yeah, he's, he's not just the football job. captain though. Like he's like the uh, the like uh, saintly football captain. You know, like Megatron's like he's like the the cocky uh, wide receiver class, guy. Class. Like, pres- he's the class president. Yeah. Um, Megatron would probably be a school shooter, probably. Um, not too <laughs> soon. All right. This awesome. question is steering a little bit too much towards Rule Thirty Four. I, 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 I tend to agree. Um, if yeah. it exists, there's porn of it on the internet. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Well, the the only reason why I said the Dinobots be the bullies, just to clarify, my was like a lot of like they're big. They were intimidating, and uh, I feel like when you watch, like, media about bullies, it's always like, bullies are always tough until you punch them in the face. But, like, not the bullies I went to school with. Like, if you punch them in the face, they just beat the fucking otter box off you. So, like, uh, that, that's how I kind of viewed the Dinobots. Tracks and they would be the hippie, the, the stoner. Kind of, uh, Tracks thing. might be... I don't know. Tracks might not be the stoner in my eyes. Oh, you're talking about the... Oh. Yeah, beach, oh. Beachcomber would be the stoner. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> For yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah, he's a hippie. Yeah. So, um... I'm Tracks out. would That's, be... I thought he meant, like, what we would be. Like, I thought he was asking the question, like, what, you know, the Shattercast people would be. Mm-hmm. In no, because he was saying, like, for example, he saw the Constructicons yeah, as... Yeah, okay. I misread it then. Okay. Trax would be the uh, the rich kid, like you know the mm. rich kid who's better yeah, than you. Part, oh, sideswipe, sideswipe. So he dresses like really, too. really fancy. But yeah, well, I was saying he might be in he might be like in like the Votech kind mm-hmm. of fashion yeah. segment. Uh, I think uh, Prowl, sideswipe and sun trigger. Prowl's that. the hall monitor. Exactly. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, first aid would be the where's your hall you pass? Know, nurse First off, the nurse. Alpha Trion is the guidance counselor. <laughs> All right, let's move Sound on to the next one. Uh, he, oh, he uh, he works in the uh, he's the guy that wheels in the TV into your class. That's like you're <laughs> like, oh man, that guy's life didn't turn out the way it was. Um, dear SCU crew, considering the way third party seems to be slowing down and the realization we might not get fringe characters like Duo Cons, Battle Chargers, Junior Target Masters, Headmasters, do you feel any of the current Hasbro offerings make decent options for an MP display? From Chuck Ornick, my answer is no. Justin, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. Um, but there's like most of those characters. Like, while I would like to see certain characters like that, like the uh, the Omnibots. Like, I'd love to see MP Omnibots. You know, mm-hmm. if it doesn't happen, like I'm not gonna be like, well, I'm gonna go get this Hasbro Deluxe and stick it on my shelf because that's good enough. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't think I need to do that. So. The characters that aren't being made aren't really characters I feel need to be on my shelf necessarily. I may mm-hmm. want them, but I don't really need them. Greg. Um come back to me. Matt. I mean there's a reason, you know, they're called masterpieces and there's a reason why they're called, you know, 
chug and stuff. Like, I, I think most people want to say, you know, like Siege Jetfire and Siege Omega Supreme when they are really great Transformers. And for that, I, I would not re- replace them as an MP. But I can see why some people would because they are really good and they could fit in as a masterpiece, I think, on their shelf if they want that and everything. But for me, I know I know the difference. I'm not saying anybody else doesn't know the difference. I'm just saying I know that there's a, the reason why they're made MP and the reason why they're made for retail and stuff. Right. Uh, Greg? Yeah, I was just trying to think if, there, if there's anything I've used in the past, and I can't really think of any. Um. <laughs> And then, like, with and you, I admit the question. I forgot. Did he say just masterpiece, like official product? Like, do you think that the Hasbro shit can fit in? Okay. With Hasbro stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think so. Right. Not now. No, me neither. Um, let me let me ask a side question. To this one, real quick, round robin style. Uh, what one character that has no real has no MP representation? Um, that really is not influential in seasons one, two, or three in any way, shape, or form. Just like a G1 toy, which one do you want to see get an MP release? Holler. I don't know. <laughs> um, um, I want the I want the uh, the clones, the Decepticon ones specifically. Mm. Mm. Go on, Greg. Oh. Um... Hauler wouldn't be too hard. And I would buy Hauler. I don't think uh, Brainstorm. Uh, You could probably send it to Sean Love and get a Hauler made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. I can't think Uh, of anything right now. Here's the MMT Uh, Hauler. That's already out. Punch, Counterpunch. That's that's my guess for Justin. No, I want to run a battery run book. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, I would like a Punch, Counterpunch, but I, I, I... I really like Runabout and Runamuck. I think that they are cool characters choice. that do deserve a MP offering. I would like yeah. someone to do Punch Counter Punch, though. But it's just not my first choice. Um, <laughs> if Well, I don't know who they retool them out of. Or, or, like, I don't know what mold they would use. But, like, I see that's Season 3, though. And I, I'm not really playing. I'm trying not to do Season 3. Um, but I was going to say, like, something like DevCon or something like that. But, uh, okay. like a character that had like an episode focused like with him I mean we've gotten you know figures of of less you know alright um we got an MP collector question <clears throat> uh, I want to read just to make sure we get it for 300 he said dear SCU crew in your best estimation what were the primary causes of World War One? for example do you believe historians tend to overemphasize the role of wait wrong podcast I got to slow down with all these questions I send out to every show uh, or in the ether this week so uh, I'll tell you I heard it was over an assassination that's what I that's what I like I always grew up kind of learning just to answer that um, my actual question is about pizza I was well, curious that's good I was I was curious to know which topping or toppings you hate to see on a pie. Like, if there was a topping or two that you could eliminate from every pizza in America, what would you make disappear? So I'll pineapple. go first. My I answer would. My. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin already got it. Good, go ahead. Get you have any more? Any more you want to say about the pineapple? Nope. Ham and pineapple you can go away. You can go to hell. So my answer is onion. Uh, just because I fucking hate an onion, but I know onions, but I know onions and green peppers are a thing. So if, if those people were too hurt by that, I would move for any like novelty pizza. That's not like a proper pizza. Like it's a, a, it's a bacon, egg and cheese pizza. It's a fucking cheeseburger pizza. It's a ham and pineapple pizza. <laughs> it's a cheesecake pizza. I, I, all that shit, get it the fuck out of here. I love that um, shit pizza, though. Spoken like a true white boy. But I'll also say this. Any fucking pizza that comes from a chain, like Papa John's, Domino's, Pizza Hut, Pizza Bullies, et cetera, et cetera, you can't call that shit a pie. That's mm-hmm. not what that is. No, that's a pizza. delivery pizza. Yeah, that's just pizza. 
Um, it's not delivery. It's du jour I mean, It's also true. That, that too. That too. <laughs> that gets eliminated as well. Um, and, 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 and you know what? What's ironic about that? They're absolutely right. It's not delivery. Exactly. It's fucking, it's fucking <laughs> it's from my fucking freezer. I can tell. Um, makes the best pizzas. Greg, what do you got on this? Um, I can't really think of traditional, like your, your standard toppings that I would get rid of. And that includes ham and pineapple. I think everything has a place. Everything has a proper combination. The trash. Mm. Um, man, you're a better, you're a better <laughs> little guy than I, Justin. Better man. Better man. You gonna, you going to say to Slack too? Yeah. Are you, are, is it tryout? To, to that I'm going to uh, uh, Petercast. Uncut, um, with the exception pizza, of ham and pineapple, pineapple that is cut. It's a long podcast gonna, name, but you know it is what it is. I was going to order pizza tonight, and there weren't any coupons for the places that I like, and I wasn't paying. No goddamn thirty-five dollars just to have a couple slices of pizza. Mm. Um, I guess anchovies. If I had to get rid of one ah, thing, damn it, that's what I was say. I don't hate anchovies though, to, to be honest yeah. with you. But Smelly if I had shit. to pick one of the traditional pizza toppings, really shit. Mm. Matthew, tuna. Tuna. <laughs> Fuck, put the tuna on a pizza. <laughs> if you put tuna on your pizza, you need to get the fuck out of America. No, Wait, I, don't. Um, I was gonna say I, I was gonna say anchovies too. I mean, I I, I can I can do. I love Canadian bacon. Uh, I don't know if I like. I don't really like pineapples, but I love Canadian bacon. But uh, anchovies, man, no. Nah, if you start, I, I, somebody starts cooking that shit, man, it just stinks up everything. Ugh, gross. That's it. And Brooklyn makes the best pizzas ever, I guess. Uh, um, I would ahead. get uh, I would get rid of whatever that is that uh, Domino's is brushing on the crust now. No oh, butter. I I guess I don't know. It, it that shit gets strong like all of a sudden. Oh, it's anchovy butter. No, oh, probably yeah. All right, let's try to go through this one. Yes or no? Okay, just simple yes or no. This is from Gareth. He says, "Dear SCU crew, was having a look at my MP collection and I got to thinking about pieces that have really only one definitive option. Some of these pieces have been around a while, or." as I like to say, a while. Do you think other companies should take a shot at the following? So yes or no? Wind Charger. Justin. Um, I'm sorry, what was the question? Does he... uh, so these are toys that only have one representation. Do you think other companies should take a stab? Oh, yes, Wind Charger, absolutely, 100%. Okay, Matt. Yes. Greg. Yes. Me, no. Scourge, Justin. Uh yes, Matt. Wait, yes. hold on one second. G one scourge or yes, the robots sorry. in disguise scourge. This is all G one stuff. Okay, I'm sorry. Just making sure because the fans no obviously scourge is fine if you want that scourge. Um yes, Greg. Yes, I'm gonna say no. Wheelie, Justin. Oh, no. Uh no, I'm fine with mine. Matt. Yes, Greg. Uh. I'm going to give it a really, really, really soft yes. I'm going to say no. <clears throat> Mirage. Justin. No. Matt. No. Greg. Uh, Takara, but other than that, no. No for me as well. Gears. Justin. I'm trying to think if I have a representation of Gears. Um, He's yeah, referring yes. to the bag cube. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would like a new one. Okay. Matt? Nah. Uh, Matt, Matt's muted his wife. Matt Sorry. muted his wife in the background. My wife, uh, <laughs> um, She's Greg? Yeah. So Gears is one I would say yes to. Um, I'm surprised you said yes to Scourge, to be honest. I thought no, I said, I said, I've said no to everything. Oh, no. Okay, except... I'm sorry. Hey, I'm surprised you said no to a Scourge. Yep. Uh, Cup. Justin? No. Matt. No. Greg. No. No for me as well. Perceptor. Justin. No. Matt. Yes. Greg. Yes. Me, no as well. Skyfire. Justin. No. Matt. No. I'm good. Nothing. Greg. No. Me, no as well. Rekgar. Justin. Nope. Matt. No. Greg. No. Me know as well. Power Glide, Justin. <clears throat> no. 
I'm happy with that power glide. Who did that one? It's uh, DX9. Yeah, DX9. Yeah, it's one of your best toys. Oh, Yeah, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> no. DX9 is good. Greg. Yeah. And I say no as well. He says, for my money, they all seem fair game except Mirage, Power Glide, and Club. Due to my doubting whether anyone would be aforementioned. See, so that's my thing, Gareth, is that like I'm at a point where uh, they're all kind of good enough to start wrapping it up. Like, uh, I want it wrapped up. I want it wrapped up. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, who did who did Scourge? Is that X Transbots? X Transbots. Okay. Yeah. I've never messed with that one. So like I, I like I can't <laughs> honestly. Like, oh, and and it and it has its problems. I I would the only, and that's the reason I say yes because Wait. like it's X Transbots. But like honestly, I know nothing about it. So like, if I had it, maybe my opinion would change. Um, but yeah. I I'll even add a, a caveat to that one. If a company didn't make a whole new scourge, if they would just make some fucking hands for that X Transbots one, if they do the reverse Keith. It makes some hands for an X Transbots KFC figure that didn't have like spindly articulated fingers. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would that would increase the uh, enjoyment of that figure um, tenfold. All right. Let's do yes or no. We got a little bit of time. Let's do yes or no for this as well. Do your Shatter Cast crew with the combiners Fans Toys is currently putting out? Do you think we'll be getting G two repaints at some point? Mm, Guru Justin. I mean, I feel like, yeah, but, like, who gives a shit? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's my favorite answer so far. <laughs> Greg. Uh, yeah, I think so. Matt. Yeah. I'm going to say no. I'm throwing the dice. I think I think we, I think think we at this point we have a better chance of getting some fucking X version with metallic paint than we do getting a G2 version. Well, they have G2 Dinobots. No, I, I know. But, but so compare the G2 Dinobots from so many years ago to how many things they're re-releasing now with kind of cartoon accurate or whatever the fuck they're doing. You know what I mean? Um, don't use that voice with fans toys. <laughs> might get your, uh, you might get your card. I can't right? cancel my sponsorship. <laughs> if they take 10% away from my check, I'll be in a very good place. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. All right, let's see if we can go through this one. What's up, Shattercast? I heard Bobby and Robert D. talking about how it's the most wonderful time of the year within the last couple of weeks. I have to agree. Back to school means different things to different people for sure, but when I was a kid, I thought the best part of learning was found in field trips. I would say my favorite field trip was to the Jacksonville International Airport. We seen the entire airport <laughs> – you sound mad, Jacksonville, in that sentence. We seen the entire airport. Even got to sit in a DC-10 for several minutes. The other kids were very loud, as most second graders tend to be while seated in a commercial aircraft. Suddenly, an unexpected hush came over the situation. One of my classmates took advantage of this opportunity and yelled out with an extreme southern accent, Is this like the one Leonard Skinner went down in? Was this the type of comment too soon to make in such a public setting? Who's to say for sure? This did happen two years after the plane went down. I'm only guessing nerves were struck in a severe way because as soon as the dude said what he said, there was a stunned 10-second silence. Followed by the pilot emerging from the cockpit, then asking everyone to exit the aircraft. I know you guys tend to question. I know you guys tend to question on where you want to go or what you want to be or see, but what about what you've already experienced? So what say you, Shattercast? What in your life was presented as a potential <laughs> learning experience but was also good for a laugh? Your fan, EL. EL, you need to ask more questions, Mac. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, anybody got something off the top of their head? I, I do. I do. Okay, go ahead, Greg. The first time I had sex. Whoa, hey, you. Tell us about it. <laughs> um, we should all share that story. <laughs> Mine is trash. Mine's, mine's in a car. Yeah, mine was pretty. Mine was pretty weird. Mine's in a friend's sleepover basement. Lorna, shout out to Lorna hosting the gig. What's up, Lorna? Yeah. How are you doing? Is that is that like Baltimore slang for selling ass in the basement? No, no, I wish. Um, what was educational that turned out that was good for last year? I don't know. We always kind of had 
Mm, I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for it, so I'm going to stick with my joke answer. Gotcha. Um, anybody else got anything off the top of their head? Mine was when I got fired from my first job. Uh, like, fired, fired. It was awesome. Um, <clears throat> so I had this job right at, it was not right out of college. I worked actually at Home Depot designing kitchens right out of college because I graduated college with an engineering degree and they're like, you've used CAD, right? And they're like, I'm like, yeah. And they're like, kitchen design. I'm like, it's not really the same thing, but I'm okay. Uh, and they got really pissed at me because I worked there. I went through all their training program, which is this like really long, like number of months thing to get certified. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm quitting. And they're like, we spent all this money. I'm like, I told you that I wasn't sticking around. Like what college person with an engineering degree wants to stick around at Home Depot for the long term. You know, like, come on. Right. Um, so I then I got why. this job and I moved down to Virginia and it was a good job and it was fun. And I applied to be a supervisor like 700 times and every time was told no for various reasons, but I was I was next in line and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then like, you know, finally this like last time, you know, like right when I come into work for the day, you know, like, I'm like, I'm definitely getting it this time. This interview went great. They like pulled me aside. They're like, oh, you didn't get it. You know, like, and like, this is a place that you worked 12 hour days. Um, you know, and I was on night shift at the time. Um, so, you know, at night shift, you never sleep as well as you do when you're on a day shift type job. And, uh, they told me like right before I started working. So I was fucking pissed all day, you know, I'm like, you couldn't have told me this like on the way out. Like before I went away for the weekend, like, so I had the weekend to not be pissed. Like you told me before I started my job. Right. Um, so yeah, I went to work and then like, obviously I was pissed off. So I looked at things the wrong way. And it turns out that, uh, you, it's not the best idea to look at computer screens when you're pissed off. Cause you read them wrong. And so, uh, in this particular job, I was making semiconductors and I was like, yes, this went through this machine and everything was fine. And I was like, nope, it wasn't. And so, like, I ended up, like, killing, like, probably, like, $20,000 worth of computer chips uh, in That's that night nice. because I was angry and read things wrong. And uh, they were like, yeah, you're fired. I'm like, well, fuck you guys. It, like, threw my badge across the whole thing. And, like, you know, it was a fun experience because I learned, I learned how to channel my anger towards my supervisors. <laughs> In not a healthy, <laughs> constructive way, but a way that made me feel good. And I think in the moment, that was worth it. It's got to count for something. Exactly. So uh, I always I always talk about my story where, like, I walk out and my supervisor followed me out to my car that, that next morning. And he's like, I'm going to need your badge. And I'm like, here's my fucking badge. And threw it across the parking lot. I'm like, good luck finding it. And just peeled out of there. Uh, it was the best job ever. So <laughs> fuck that place. Matt? Uh, the only thing I... I can think of a lot of the time I had educational. Um, I was a, when I was in the military, I was over in Germany and I was a cook and I did the burners because um, that's what I did. Uh, so I did all the burners and everything, got them up into the, you know, everything for the cook and everything. Um, then I went outside, you know, we was out in the, we was out in the field and everything. So I went out to the, um, to, you know, whatever, out in the field, whatever, and uh, found a bunch of trees and everything. I thought I was in a good hunting space. I was going to take a little nap because it was really early. And uh, my, start, my staff sergeant found me. And um, I learned to uh, not sleep out in the woods again. So uh, he made me do push-ups for like, you know, 30 minutes or something. And, um, yeah, that's it was funny, I guess, back then. But not funny anybody else, just me. Like in the moment, it maybe, maybe wasn't funny. But, like, like I was, like my story, like I was fucking livid. But, like, now I look at it, I'm like, ah, that's my favorite story. <laughs> well, you my story like... <laughs> I apologize. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I thought it was funny that he put me in, you know, made me do push-ups. Absolutely. Sleeping out in the It's not about what's funny in the stuff, moment. It's man. what's funny to you now, Matt. Exactly. Oh, well. Bobby? Um, so, two, two, two circumstances come to mind. One, I went to France, Italy, and Spain in 2005, and it changed my entire worldview. And I, I can't express enough, especially to Americans, to get out of the country because... Uh, at least growing up in the 80s, you know, and and you like you just feel like there's America and then there's the third world globe. And getting out there and seeing like the difference in, in the way that people live, the difference in pride that they take in certain things. Like it was a it was a learning experience for me where I was like, holy fuck, like 
maybe it's better not to have a bed bath and fucking whatever on every corner. Maybe it's better to have something a little bit more independent that has a little bit more pride behind it from somebody that has a little kind of taste of ownership in regards to it. So that was a, a huge kind of life changing event for me. Uh, the other thing was when I was a kid, uh, my dad was a blue collar guy and my mom started off on the bottom, but then she made it to here much like Drake, but it's like a was by the time she started talking her shit was like a white collar person. And she used to always say to me, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you want to take a shovel to work or do you want to take a briefcase to work? <laughs> and <clears throat> I don't know why that resonated with me, but it did. And I went to college, I got my degree, I got all that shit, and I went to, to to the workforce with my degree where I had the lowest paying job I've ever had of my fucking life using my degree, and I was the most miserable I've ever been. And I got out of that, and now I go to work, and I carry a shovel, and I am happier than any other job I've ever had in my life. Shovel being so. a obvious analogy for the broom. Right. Correct. Or, yeah. or or the mob stick. The broom right. is kind of the initial. Right, right. right. And the, the mob is really where you kind of clean her up. You know what I mean? You work at the circus, man. Your poop is scooper. Mm. So with that, uh, I think that'll take us out of here. Uh, thanks to everybody that's been around, especially mm-hmm. since the mm-hmm. beginning. Fucking 300 episodes. Like 900 hours, theoretically, of fucking hearing us talk about Transformers and dicks. Everything else. You know, so... Uh, don't thank you the from the of my heart. It's, it's kind of really crazy. Risky. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, we should have a moment where they talk about us. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. I would, I would, I would like if you left in the comments. This is how we know you made it to the end of the show too. Mm-hmm. Your your favorite moments from Shattercast over 300 episodes. Mm-hmm. I would like to read. <laughs> I would like to read those. I would like to read those. Also, yeah, your top awesome. five castmates uh, members Tell you what. In, in order. <laughs> uh, if you could pick your shattered cast out of all the rotating <laughs> crew, you could pick your top five. Tell you <laughs> what. If, we, <laughs> if we if we get enough, we might we could read them online too, maybe. Yeah. On yeah. air or something, yeah. and, and and say what you know what y'all liked about us and everything. And, but it's been fun. And I don't feel like I don't. Do you feel like we're like I feel like we're like in the echelon now. Like I don't feel like we have to prove anything. I feel like it's like, look, you just you either like it or you don't. Yep. Oh yeah, we're way behind no, beyond good. that. You know, like people that know know, and people that don't like. You know, I feel like it's just it's established in its lane. Whatever its lane is, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank y'all from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah. And the top. Good night, folks. Here's the 200 more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you think 300 yeah, is a great episode, wait till you see 500. We got uh, the, the last episode is 500. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know right now. We're gonna promote 500. We're actually gonna do something fun for 500. So just stick around. Shattered mm-hmm. cast orgy. <laughs> we got shirts for sale. Yeah, we do have shirts for sale at TFCon. Not really though, but. Dun, dun, dun. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Shirts to and my personal favorite, the well-established gentleman's show, Stasis Lock. At Real Robot and Fear Corpse. I am Ratchet. Third party TF Crashers and Open Your Toy Podcast. This podcast is intended for maturity. This is only the sole purpose of entertainment. If it doesn't fit for your sense of sensibilities, please feel free to turn it off now. Shut the fuck up!